Well, I'm not on the trap line. I'm over here at Mavis Discount Tires. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a, a few of these and I'm gonna see how these guys work for catching coyotes. Good morning, trap line talk fans, I guess. <laughs> um, I am out here and I told you that I was going to go a little harder towards the coyotes and frankly this is just to make me a better trapper. So here's something kind of cool. So if you watched my previous episodes, up in here is the tall grass where I um, missed a coyote or caught a coyote toe. Uh, and what I did was I put a deer hide in the back there near the trees and then set some blind traps just on the trails going in and out from that area and I feel like you know when you fail in a spot like that that you just go somewhere else but I uh, was driving along my trail today and found this a huge doe that it was 15 degrees last night and this deer is warm still <laughs> So it must have been hit by a car this morning. Um, and so I put it in my trailer and we are gonna try this again. I think this doe is a gift to me. Um, and man, did I have a hard time getting her in this trailer. <laughs> it's like a 160 pound, 180 pound deer. I thought it was a little fawn or something when I first saw it. Um, here's something else interesting, this little road. Okay, I have a set on the side of the road here because I'm finding that coyotes are coming out of the woods here and they're working around this big log pile that's up in here and this morning I'm driving around the corner and what do I see walking up that road that just like two hours ago a bobcat just walking up the road away from me not even running and then just went around the bend and I'm like geez usually us trappers are not like I'm a hunter too but you know when you're hunting you're the predator and you're trying to be quiet <laughs> and um when you're trapping you're just out here making a bunch of noise because basically your targets are coming through uh at nighttime um so it's pretty rare that you see the animals you're trying to trap at least the predators when you're driving around on your atv <laughs> so that was a first for me watching the bobcat go right up that road wish i had like a gopro on or something the other thing for me is I'm running out of traps. So um, to do this new set, I pulled this drag and trap out of a, a set that has not had any activity. So we're going to put it in up here and I have one other small trap I can put in as well. The deer's right there and there's a trail over here and then there's one right up here. So I have my trap right at this hourglass where it's wide, thin, wide again. And this time, just in case even my uh, pan cover, which is wax paper, is somehow being noticed, I'm using corn husk. So it's very, very thin, won't impede my trap from working. And now I'm gonna cover this with some grass clippings. Okay, there's the finished product there. The trap is underneath the grass clippings there. We get you down to uh, predator height. You know, this trail's coming through, and it's kind of like a natural stepping point right inside there. Let's see how it goes. Okay, and here is blind trap number three around the deer carcass. So I have one over there near the ATV, one down in here, and right in here, this is less of a trail, but I feel like it's an escape route for them. If they get a piece of a deer and they want to run off with it, they're going to come this way through here. And then there's a low point right in there where my trap is. And I have, there's a low point like over here too. So you like step over the brush right into that. And the pan cover in there is a leaf. <laughs> So nothing foreign except for the trap and very well hidden. And I think it's 
winterized for the most part. We're supposed to get two or three inches of snow tonight. Morning, everybody. Um, just getting ready to go out on the trap line, and I remember that I told you guys that I would show you what I'm using for pan covers. So here it is. Um, it is paraffin M laboratory film. And what's cool about this stuff is this paper on the outside. With one hand here. All right, here it is. So the paper on the outside is a little noisy, but this is not. This is so normal wax paper is kind of crinkly. I feel like if a predator steps on the edge of it, they're going to be like, what? What's that? You know? Um, I know there's leaves and other things, but anyways, um, this stuff is kind of rubbery and actually like I'm pressing it like really hard right now and see it stretches. It's like, it's yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. The only thing I don't like is it's not really that wide. So you can see sometimes on my MB 550 traps, it would be nice to be a little bit wider. Um, but anyways, working good. I think if I didn't use this, I would probably use landscaping fabric and then I could cut out the sizes that I need. Yeah. So I just cut a bunch of new pan covers out. And one thing I would say, as opposed to landscaping fabric, this will be waterproof. Um, it doesn't let water into your set. So probably I'm going to be sticking with these. Uh, 10 degrees right now all loaded up with my coyote tires we'll talk about that hope the ATV starts okay lesson number one don't leave your gloves in the fur shed overnight on a 10 degree night Holy cow, my fingers are frozen, but I'm sitting here in the sun and uh, making a fist in my gloves to uh, get warmed up. Also, having a windshield on an ATV is a must, uh, just like a snowmobile. I mean, if you don't have a windshield, you're getting hit in the head and the chill just goes right through you. Well, so far this morning, there's tons of tracks out here including mine right there, but these are coyotes. They were, see right past my ATV, they're working the edge of this field, which is what they commonly do. And here's what's cool. They came in to check my, uh, my DP, which is the dog proof for raccoons, which I don't expect to get any raccoons until they, until they wake up but they absolutely came in and stopped here at my DP and then went back out. <laughs> and remember that just has uh, catfish food in it that smells like Kool-Aid. <laughs> eh, not a uh, coyote bait, but it's interesting that they picked it out as a visual thing to, uh, to check out. Well, so far this morning, there's two coyotes actually walking my entire trap line. So maybe when we get to a certain point, they'll be in a trap. We can see right here that they went right by my bobcat cubby. I don't expect them to stop into this, but check this out. They did. And my trap is right there. So they came in and walked, probably sniffed and said, you know what? That's a little too scary to reach in there for that chicken for me. And they went on their way. So we'll follow along. Well, here's something super interesting. Here is the deer carcass area, and the deer's in the snow back there. And look at these coyotes. They went right up to it, and they would not step in on that trail. How interesting is that? We are dealing with some educated dogs here. So remember, I caught the toe on one right in here. So I think that they've marked this area as, you know, danger zone. I'm just gonna walk around and see. They went right down my trail here. And they are walking the road. 
Let's just see if they're running on any of my other trails. Well, holy cow, they did. Did, but they missed the trap. The trap is right there and they stepped right over it. So I'm going to dust that off and get it more adjusted for a better footprint. Holy cow. And yep, they went right through. Okay, I was so close to getting the coyote here. So what I did was he stepped right over there and the trap is right here so I just took my broom and I'm gonna make a little spot there and hopefully they keep using this trail and next time we'll get in my trap and up here got the same thing this was my escape route and I use this too I called it the escape route because I feel like sometimes they grab stuff and run because they don't want someone else to get it Totally came through here too. I can't tell exactly where my trap is on this one. But they didn't step on it. I think I'm just going to let this one ride another night. Okay. So there's a couple things that are actually nice ab about watching the videos and not being here. One is the smells. <laughs> if you don't like trapping smells, some of them are pretty strong. The other thing is the cold. Holy cow. My toes are frozen this morning. All right, so check this out. Remember I did this uh, set right along the edge of the road. I said the coyotes were working this edge of the road. Well, sure enough they were, but they didn't go in to where I put just a little bit of um, gland lure and a flat set on this trail here. So what I did was I swept it out, kind of made it look like a coyote might have stopped there and scratched his legs. I'm not going to put any urine at the moment because I don't know the exact location of my trap, but just going to let them work this. Maybe they'll come down the road here again tonight and make a little stop right there before they head on. The deer is right down around the corner over there. Well, over here, I had a bobcat cubby. You can see my flag right there. I caught a bobcat here and a possum and a skunk and this morning got this beautiful red fox and the thing is it's a drag so I was hoping it would leave the area and not mess up my cubby but boy did he make a mess so uh, we'll get him taken care of move on down the line I have a theory why I'm getting so many red fox in the uh, bobcat cubbies, and that's my uh, backyard raised chickens, because <laughs> they were about four years old and stopped laying, so I butchered them and uh, decided to use them for the trap line, so use their feathers to make the explosion uh, around the cubby to draw the cats in, and then I've just been throwing the whole chicken into uh, the cubby and I think that the red fox just can't resist that they just you know they get into chicken coops man and they'll do anything to get to those chickens so why not into a bobcat cubby I mean it's wide open in the front so I did have a couple spots where they were pulling the chicken out of the back and I didn't do this but I think all I have to do is put a trap on the back of that and I would get them there too just uh, kind of running low on traps there it is my Big Brahma hen, second largest chicken in the world, next to the Jersey Giant, and super duper red fox trap bait. Okay, here's the remake. So, got my cubby built again. That really stands out, man. That is like uh, from a reservation teepee here, and my chicken in the back, and you can see I got my pan cover there, and I'm um, I just went and harvested all of this because I'm not gonna use any wax dirt here. I got the trap is in there nice and solid. And what I have been doing is making sure the levers are front and back. And this thing is super guided, like all blocked in. 
they say with bobcats, they step where you want them to. And that's right where I want them to step, so I'm gonna cover this up right now. Okay, well, there's the straw, or the neighborhood grasses that I cut down, covering the trap. I also made like a big area of grasses, because in case a canine comes again, you know, we want them comfortable walking on loose grass and then hit the trap there. Also, this, the bait's back in there, the chicken, and there's plenty of room to step right here. But that's so I could give maybe a back leg. So that the, you know, a lot of times they say bobcats will pass by and not go all the way in. So we have the trap out further. And, and yeah, so anyways, there it is. It's all reset. And this is a hot spot, man. They must be working down this edge because this is where the coyotes attacked that chicken. I didn't get them, but I've been catching a lot of fox here, bobcat, and skunks and possums. Well, just to cover this again, I've got a hay set right in here that hasn't done anything. I'm gonna pull those traps and repurpose them. I've got a bobcat cubby way over there. You can just barely see it. I just re-put some uh, pheasant in there because when I, since I caught that raccoon, it's been gone. And then on this side here, I've got this cubby. And hey, look, it's destroyed. And who's sitting right over here? A beautiful, I think it's a tom male bobcat i've been waiting for them to come around i got three females and uh now it's mating season so the toms are working around i am so excited this is just awesome nice red fox this morning and now a big bobcat Okay, here's the remake on the cubby where I just got the bobcat. Eh, build it back pretty much like I had it. Trying to keep it so that nothing can see from either side what's inside. And I have a partridge in there from a game farm. And I am not going to... I'm getting low on wax dirt, so I'm saving it for the predator sets. And I'm going to... Yeah, that is actually I'm doing some predator sets without it because I'm worried it might smell like pickles from my pickle buckets. But any case, I bedded this one solid, doesn't move, and I'm going to cover this one in grass and leaves too. Put a little pan cover on there, and I have my chain over here, and uh, yeah, dispatch the big cat there. So maybe this will keep working for us. Wow, this bobcat's big. Uh, I'm gonna get a weight on him. So, my handy dandy bathroom scale. I am with my snow clothes on. <laughs> 187.4. Let's see if I can even hold this guy and get on here. Oh my gosh. Okay. What does that say? 226.6 226.6 oh my gosh guys that means that this bobcat is 39.2 pounds man when it, he's as long as me when i hold him up I mean, holy cow what a big cat unfortunately we don't have i mean it's probably some of the best spots i've had on any of my cats but they're still a little i guess what you would call muddy compared to a uh, western cat but not too shabby wow really happy to have them gonna try to uh, um, do a good job skinning them i am actually teaching a youth group on trapping this weekend so for the first time i'm not going to skin right away i'm going to put him into the freezer so that this youth group can uh, see a big catch like this Okay, talk about setting on sign. We've got the coyote. They're coming from this field to this field and accessing this road where I just was. So we're going to do a tire set right here. Okay, step number one to the tire set here. Set on sign. Step number two. I'm not going to show you because I showed you in a previous video, but I made a... I bedded my trap solid. Okay, 
cut the ground out perfect for the shape of the trap. In this case, I lined a little bit of wax dirt underneath and just I put my pan cover on and a little bit of wax dirt on top and then a bunch of clippings of this straw that I have, bedding straw. Step number two, make sure that you have Geo Drive 205-52R16s. No, I'm only kidding. But uh, actually, I have heard that we don't want a tire that's too big. So check this out. Nine inches from the trap pan to the edge of the tire. So we have the trap completely centered in the tire. Step number three, I took the straw and I stuffed it inside the tire all the way around on the inside. And now I'm gonna take some Dunlap's Soul Taker Winter Predator Bait and my little pallet knife. And I am going to smear that. I have to let go of the camera to do this, but I'm going to smear it up and under the edge of this tire, probably on two sides. I want this to smell. And then I'm gonna take some Coyote Gland Lure and stick it up under here too. Okay, we're going all Dunlap on this one, so we're going to use some of Dunlap's Hostile Predator Gland Lure. And I, I don't think on this set we need any long call because this is visual. This, they know right where it is. I think the, uh, the Gland Lure is actually working on their sex drive and making them feel comfortable that other coyotes have been here. So, you know, this, this should be safe. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of hay out there outside the tire and I'm gonna brush this out all in here and kind of fluff the duff a little bit, make the area look a little worked. And uh, that's the tire set. They have no choice. If they wanna get to the bait, they're gonna have to step in the middle of this. Okay, the first Tire set is way up around over in there. Tire set number two. My hay set is right on the corner over there and that stopped working. So we're gonna try this. And uh, yeah, as promised, we're gonna try the beaver tail bait. So this is beaver tail from last season that I cut up. And I put out in a jar. I'll show you the clips on that. Oh my God, does this smell. So this is basically a fermented, chunked up beaver tail. Everything loves eating beaver. It's really uh, delicious, even humans. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna scoop some of this up and I'm gonna tuck it under the lip of this. I'm gonna, I'm trying to put the bait all the way towards the back. So they really have to work in there. Okay, there it is, the tire set. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, Trapper Dan, what the heck are you doing? You told us that you're going with blind sets. You told us that you're gonna be using some beaver tail bait. Um, you told us you're gonna do things that you don't want the, the hackles and the um, to get the coyotes nervous or noticing. Um, well, I'll tell you my thought. My thought is that right now the coyotes are really hungry. Deer season is weeks ago. They're not getting any of that, those gut piles from the deer hunters. Um, and I know this because also they're going right into my bobcat cubbies just short of stepping on the trap. And normally a coyote wouldn't even get that close, but they're hungry. And I want to say something else. I have a couple dirt holes out and a couple trench sets, step down sets. Well, they all got killed by the freeze thaw. It started to rain a lot, then it froze again. And all those traps, even though they were in wax with dirt, did not work they were not working because there was too much water on, on top of them that that froze them in so the tire set is essentially a pretty freeze proof set of course my trap is open and exposed to the weather in the middle but the bait and the way that's set up inside the tire is completely protected they can't dig it out on me they can't avoid the trap if they want to get in to that bait they're going to have to step in the middle of that tire Let's see, maybe they'll try to push the tire to the side, I don't know, but then they're gonna maybe trip off the trap. Do you ever try to get water out of a, a tire? <laughs> it 
you you can't <laughs> unless you drill a hole it's gonna be uh that bait and that lure is gonna be in there it's gonna smell and let's see how nervous they are i think their stomachs are gonna tell them to work that set hey do i know these tire sets are gonna work absolutely no idea <laughs> no idea and um i will say this is just another i learned it on the internet thing i saw a couple guys doing this including uh coon creek outdoors um who has a lot of great videos out there that i've learned from over the years and uh yeah let's see i think actually it probably will work better on fox than the nervous educated coyotes that i have but who knows maybe they're hungry enough and um you know maybe that that beaver tail bait boy does that smell i mean that's gonna call them in but that might be the kind of stuff they want to roll around in um they can't because it's up inside the tire so yeah it's a uh, it's all trial and error out here and uh sometimes some success silly me i thought the coyotes might be a little nervous from seeing tires in the field look at all these tires <laughs> agriculture holding down uh probably some tarps and stuff all right so it's very common oh man check this out i almost caught a mouse man that was probably an eight ouncer should have lightened up my pan tension stepped right on it the darn thing yeah i'm not very good at skinning mice anyways hey uh remember trapper snore sustainable natural organic renewable resource i think we're gonna end this one here you're gonna have to stick with me to see if uh we can get some coyotes and to see about how these uh tire sets are gonna work out but as you saw by the footprints of the coyotes we are getting this close we're getting close so hey have a great one thanks friends see you next time